CBS, and here again is Forrest Sawyer. Now, Haywood Hale Brune takes you on the road and backstage with the Joffrey Ballet Company, now beginning its 30th triumphant season. We need to do our arrival pool. We always do our pool as to what time will arrive. It's such a joy to be on the stage. I mean, think how wonderful it is when at the end of performance, 3,000 people are applauding you. I mean, that's a thrilling moment in one's life that you've touched a number of people. And when that happens, you get something from it that I know is very special. the Joffrey Ballet Company has covered America, sometimes bringing dance to towns that haven't seen a live show since Edwin Booth came through. How's your quarter? Did you just look at Roger's cards? <laughs> you look at Roger's cards? Starting with six performers in a station wagon, Robert Joffrey's operation now carries 40 dancers in a bus. Only the dedication and zeal is unchanged, as Joffrey shepherds his troop that relaxes it, it and still on occasion teaches it. That's right. Plie, plie. Good. Once more. A left side. Bottom and brush. Place it. Go forward. Release the hip. Up. Good. One. And two. Reverse forward. That's it. I enjoy teaching. It's one of the pleasures of my life. I, I get something very special and and seeing someone improve and work on the line or the phrasing or being more sensitive to a quality of movement, that is something that has always excited me. Bar work has to be motivated by the music. If you let the music move you, you won't have tension. Tension results when you go against the music. You know that in choreography. If you take the bars and the wings. Gentlemen, help the ladies. And I always think of my dancers as artistic athletes because they demand so much of the body and they're very critical of themselves. That's a boy and double. And double, easy, hop. That's right. <laughs> Good. Good. I never danced with my own company. Never. Why did you never dance with your own company? Because I felt it was very important for me to watch, and I was very involved in watching everybody else, and making sure that the lights were right, and the music, and the direction, and the choreography was the way it should be. I did remembrances that came from the company. We're carrying on. And this is something special, and I'd like you to sort of read that. That's uh, the rare picture of Pavla, and these were given to me by my teacher, Marianne Wells. You have to look at the back. The, the, it's a wonderful thing that she did. Can you read that? On the back, this picture was taken in the Ellis McBride studio in Seattle in 1925, the last year that Pavla visited the United States. It is my plan to give a copy of this picture to each of my students who has made an outstanding <laughs> contribution to the death. In other words, some students didn't get it. <laughs> you did. It's very handsome. That yeah. must make you feel very proud. It does. This is very special. And here's... As a youth, Joffrey danced, but his dreams went beyond center stage to the many places around it filled by the impresario. Few places in his apartment are unfilled by mementos. Look up at her. Look up at her. Let's feel together. Stay together. Now go on. Yeah. Now don't don't take your head away until you have to. But I was always sort of uh, I seemed to be pushing people yeah. around in go. school. I was go always on. sort of directing plays and <gasps> planning the pageants and sort Keep of at her directing and Have finding head, scripts and, and uh, doing a waltz for a operetta. Uh, even at an early age, I seemed to be directing people somehow, and people seemed to enjoy it. Jeff 
Humphrey is more enthusiastic than autocratic as he rehearses his troupe in the John Cranko choreography for Romeo and Juliet. is famous for its faithful recreations of the classic repertory.